How's it going, everybody? I'm here with David from VHQ Hex. I've seen you now a couple of times. Uh, this is your second time to Hamcation? Uh, second time to Hamcation. Uh, second time to Hamcation. Possibly one of the, the beefiest, most resilient hex beams I've ever seen. Um, tell us about it. How'd you get here? How'd it get started? You know, yeah. your story a little bit. Okay, well, um, I had some failures with some of the other hexes that, uh, you know, that are built with, with lesser components. And I wanted to make something for myself that was strong and I wasn't going to have to deal with. So, being an engineer, I right on. <laughs> realized that the base of anything, the skeleton or the foundation of anything has to be strong for something to survive well. So what I came up with is a uh, CNC machine, all the parts are all heavy duty. Massive. Yeah. Yeah. Thick, thick stock, yeah. yeah. So it, it's overbuilt, but it, I, I it's, would say so, yes. It's, it's gonna last a long time. But what I wound up with is something that is not gonna not gonna break and it has a lifetime guarantee because I pretty much know that that's not the case. Mm -hmm. But I just get inundated with customers coming back telling me to have them that's the greatest antenna they ever had and I like to hear that because I built it to be non-problematic, and that's the whole basis of my design. So um, I use all American-made aluminum, all stainless steel components, all USA-made components. Um, 1698. Live, 16 we're getting live questions while we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, no way. Yeah. So how long to keep it here? Um, yeah. No, you're good. Keep okay. going. Right, we're going to get your, we're, no, you're on. Now you're on the video. What's your question? Go I'm ahead. sorry. I did not what, what was your question? At, uh, yeah, how long to ship it here? Once I get back from the ship, right, usually it's shipped the next day. Okay. Yeah, we try to keep ahead. Yeah. What's the total weight? 30, uh, the shipping weight's 43 pounds, but the antenna's 36 pounds. Oh, assembled, 36 pounds. Okay, yeah. so that'll work on it's most heavier, rotors. but there's, yeah. a, there's a reason for that. You can and use the Yesu 450 with that then, right? You can. Yeah. yeah. I prefer the 850 and the sure. 1000 because of the features that it has. Right. But I find the 450 a little slow for me. Yeah, a little bit. But it'll work. I'm just going to grab it because... Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. good. So I, I, had, I had a hex beam, right? Right. And... My point of view is you can always replace the limbs, you can replace the right. wires, right. that's easy. Right. But the, the core, the right. center is the right. heart of the system, right? And right. It, that sounds kind of like what your methodology was, right? Well, right? the deal is... I mean, look at the stock. Yeah, look that's at a 15,000 pound breaking strength dielectric fiberglass dowel. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we've done a lot of testing. We've right. done computerized testing, we've done live testing. and. Any kind of an imbalance on these rods put pressure puts pressure on the top of these posts. Yeah, these will fold over with 120 pounds of, of pressure. Yeah, so. right? And all these other ones are made with this thin wall stuff. It's just not up for the task, right? So yeah, so this one takes over a thousand pounds in testing just to yield, but th this will not break. I guarantee. This center section and the plate in hurricane force. This mm -hmm. might, it might strip everything else off the antenna, the but that's why I have a lifetime guarantee because it's not going to break. I mean, I've sold over 400 of these things in the four years that I've been out there. And I'm only probably how small handful of people have problems with the fiberglass, and it's usually one rod here or there from extreme heavy ice. Uh, we have a lot of ice up in the northeast. They just go right through it. But it's because of this. Because if you can't flex this, then you're not going to contort your design. If this folds over, then everything kind of falls apart. The right. geometry goes off and the whole thing comes down. So the problem I had with my hex beam was uh, my ground composition is different than where it was manufactured. Mm -hmm. And the tuning was, was wild. Right. right. So, uh, what do you generally think? The, the where's your optimal height for this? Like, where do you believe it should be set up? Does that affect tuning well, and, and performance? I can tell you that. I mean, mine's at 110 feet, but only because I have 110 foot power. And right. Right. 40, Here, come a little bit closer because we want to get you on the mic. Meter, 40 meter up there, but um, I've had guys put 
put them at 10 feet while they were waiting to get the tower up and hit California from the East Coast 20 over. Okay. So they'll, they'll perform at 10 feet. A lot of people put them at 30 to 35 feet, and they're happy there. Um, theoretically, 65 feet is, is the height that they should be at. Where you want them at. Right. But they work great at 35 feet, 30 feet. And uh, I think ground reflection probably has something to do with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, your takeoff angle is going to be better the higher, you know, the higher up towards 65 feet you can get. But So your um, kit above your head here, mm -hmm. is that 6 through 20? It's 6 through 20. Yeah. Our, and 6 doubles on 2 is an offset dipole. But okay. you, you got to have a duplexer to do that or but. It's six through twenty. Yeah. So all in with the center, the limbs, the wires for all the bands. How much are we talking? You mentioned it earlier, but just to yeah, repeat. Sixteen ninety eight is my current price. And, and yeah. What do you What do you advertise gain at for this? Sixty B. This is This is what we. This is what. One second. Just one second. This is what uh, these guys that did the review article came up with gain figures. And yeah. Okay. Seven. I seven, don't. Yeah. My selling point is you want an antenna that's going to last. You don't want to be out there. I mean, these things, I get reports from people, 75 mile an hour gusts all day long. Yeah. And snow and ice is the big problem. So I try not to, my customers the ones to come back and verify these game figures. Mm -hmm. They've all had other hexes and they all say the gain on this hex is way better than any hex I've ever had. Gotcha. So I get pushed back whenever I say that, but the proof's in the pudding and talk. Sure, the sure. Customers are the ones that. Do you have? So I know this is the you've got the hex beam kit here. He also has a, a forty meter trap uh, trap loaded dipole. Right. And you uh, do you have any recommendations on your website on like what center mass rotors? That kind of equipment um, should be coupled with your antenna, or you just assume yeah, people can I figure really it out. I really don't get into that too much because that's not my. Sure. You know, I get calls. I get. I bet you people ask that, right? What power should I yeah, buy? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I, It's basically, you know. Yeah. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Of, of course, but, but yeah, you know, I, I know take, people ask that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take much of a rotor to turn this thing. What it what it comes down to is how much force you have on the thrust bearing, right? Well, exactly. So if yeah, you're not yeah, running yeah. a thrust bearing on your antenna, you can hurt the rotor. I suggest you go up to like a eight hundred or one thousand Yesu or whatever brand. But important note: that's a forty-five pound antenna. No, right? no, thirty-six. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 36. 45 pound is what the rotor, the 450 will handle, right? Um, I think I'm not that. quite sure. Okay, but 35 pounds. Yeah. 36 pounds. 36 pounds. The box that ships is 42 pounds. Okay, got it. All the packing and everything, but that's probably where you got that. Number. I think, yeah. So make sure whatever you do, you're scaling your rotor appropriately, but if you're not using a thrust bearing, then you probably have to step yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, David, thank you for the insights there. We'll have links in the description so you guys can check it out. Thanks for taking yeah, the time. Appreciate it. Thank you.